This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. As we look at the growing alarm over the looming humanitarian catastrophe in Afghanistan, since the Taliban seized power in August, the United States and other donors have cut off financial aid. The United Nations warns nearly 23 million people in Afghanistan, more than half the population, are facing potentially life-threatening food shortages this winter, with nearly 9 million already on the brink of famine. For more, we're joined by Pashtun Adurani, an activist and executive director of the educational nonprofit Learn Afghanistan. She's now a visiting fellow at the Women's Center at Wellesley College. So, if you could start off uh, by talking about the humanitarian crisis uh, that Afghanistan is in the midst of and is facing even further this winter, and what you believe needs to be done and what has caused it. Thank you, Nermeen, for having me. Uh, first of all, let me start with a very specific example. Last night, I was up until 11 a.m. for one reason, because the regional hospital, which is Mirwais Regional Hospital in Kandar, uh, all the other provinces, their hospitals and clinics have closed down. So the children uh, for the pediatrics uh, ward are sent to Mirwais um, hospital. And in every bed, I kept on getting pictures for two to three babies, and they all had to be fed. And the government doesn't have the money, the government or the regime, whatever you call it. And apart from that, there is no international organization right now working on that. And at the same time, each bed has three to two children, and the ward is only uh, able to cater to only 35 children. But we have around 70 to uh, children that are there with their parents who are both starving. And this is just across Kandar. So now just imagine this is happening in every province, only for those who are able to go to the hospital, not even those who are in the districts and cannot go to hospital, are malnourished, are starving, not only the children, but also the mothers. And Pashtana, explain how widespread that is. You say this ha is happening in Kandahar. What about in the rest of the country, in rural areas, as well as in cities? Uh, Zabul, we got uh, news two weeks ago. The public clinic has closed down. There are no funds to run it. Orazgan, people are leaving and uh, they are uh, crossing the border and going to Pakistan to get uh, checkups. And there was a Hazara woman who was not able to get that access to healthcare just because she was from Afghanistan and she had a taskira and no proper documentation within Pakistan. That's the second case that we had heard about. Apart from that, we are seeing that Hillman doesn't have have a public health care system either. There are people who are waiting in lines for food, but the food outreach is short. We in Daikundi, Bamiyan, and Ghazni that I'm getting reports, there are families that are displaced, but the World Food Program is not reaching out to them, even if they are trying to reach out to them. There is no food available. There is no um, what do we call it? The proper groceries that were sent out, the aid that was sent out to Afghanistan, it's not reaching the normal people of Afghanistan. To whom? Explain, uh, Pashtana, to whom is this aid going? Who's sending the aid? And what are you calling for? Uh, who should uh, international aid agencies, the U.S. government, who should they be working with in Afghanistan now? The first thing is, when it comes to aid, you have to understand that the aid that goes to Afghanistan, two-thirds of it goes into what the international community calls paying the people the hardship money because they're working in a conflict zone or in a hardship country like Afghanistan. We need to cut that. Stop doing that to Afghanistan. Nobody needs that. We don't need other people serving in Afghanistan. Let us serve in Afghanistan. We won't charge that much. We won't even charge. There are people who are dedicated to Afghanistan, but they do need protection. That's the first thing that needs to be done. The second thing is the international aid organizations. For them, it's just another country. It's just another Syria or Yemen where they have to take pictures and make their careers out of it. For me, it's my country and people are starving in it. Public health care is paralyzed. Uh, education literacy rate is is paralyzed right now. Women are not working. Girls are not going to school. Most importantly, people don't have food on table. They don't have wood to restock a stock for winter. So these are very important, but also dangerous times to live in. And most importantly, where is the humanity in it? The international organization, they thrive on using the humanity of the people when they are asking for donations. But then at the same time, two thirds of it's being used just for the overhead cost and only peanuts reach to the people of Afghanistan. That's what one thing needs to be heard and said again and again. And most importantly, you have to understand that 
Afghan people are there. There are Afghans within Afghanistan right now. There are people outside of Afghanistan who didn't work with the government and who are willing to work for Afghanistan and who can make sure that to install new financial system, not only in uh, CDCs, but also in apps, we could be using that. Apart from that, there could be a task force that could be used, a, th a 30 to 40 percent task force that is only responding to the development and the uh, humanitarian crisis right now. But nobody is doing that. The international community is going in, but with no home work done. How do you sit with Taliban who don't have any skills in diplomacy or international development? How do you talk to them? And Pashtana, finally, before we end, there have been reports of widespread extrajudicial killings across the country, including hangings, beheadings, and public displays of corpses. Uh, could you uh, explain what you know of that and the fact that your own cousin uh, uh, was murdered by the Taliban? He is one of the relatives uh, in Hillman. His name is Naveed, and he has been uh, murdered a few weeks ago for just a Facebook post. And most importantly, this is not the f this is the first one where the media got its attention. There are extrajudicial killings happening all over Afghanistan right now, and nobody is talking about it. Nobody is even reporting it. And most importantly, when it comes to that, nobody even wants to go there because right now it's not important. Right now, people are starving, and the international community has ex to exploit that. Finally, Pashtunat, the idea that the U.S. spent millions of dollars on billions on this war, now the U.S. pulls out and cuts off money to Afghanistan when it's not at war with Afghanistan. Your final comment. Then what made them at war in the first place? I mean, like, if they, they are, they, the people they were at war with, they are still ruling right now. How come they forgive them in 20 uh, years? If that's the uh, scale of how you forgive people, then they might be willing to forgive Daesh in the 20 years. That's the first thing that you need to understand. And how did they justify for the past 20 years that taking taxpayers' money to pay for the school and the hospitals in Afghanistan, and now somehow that is not relative, now somehow that is not important? They went into 2001 to justify women's rights and use that to get into Afghanistan and said that women were being abused. Right now, women are not being abused. Women are not starving. Children are not starving. How come they're justifying it right now? How come they're so okay with it right now, now that the same people are ruling the country? Pashtun Adirani, I want to thank you for being with us, activist and executive director of the educational nonprofit Learn Afghanistan, visiting fellow at the Women's Center at Wellesley College in Massachusetts. That does it for our show. A very happy birthday to Renee Feltz. Democracy Now! is produced with Renee Feltz, Mike Burke, Dina Guzder, Messiah Rhodes, Maria Tarasena, Tammy Warnoff. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh.